big show. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Yes, yes, we are here. The Danger Zone Podcast number 33. Welcome Big Shug, Chef Tanya, Mr. DL. And we got two guests calling in today. Two? Yeah, that's the first time. <laughs> Yo, we, yeah, we got two? We got Craig G. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and right. And then we got some NFL picks. Oh, yeah, that's surprise, right. Okay, with okay, a surprise okay. guest. Yeah. Craig G, yeah, that's right, man. The Juice Crew legend, you know what it is, man. Hey, Big Shug, we about to get it in. What you got, DL, this week? Let's get man, it I had a busy week, man. I'm what fucking you? exhausted. So I started my week on a video shoot hiking with cannabis. Mm. We hiked to the top of a mountain and shot a video where he rapped mm. cannabis style cannabis raps. Cannabis the artist, not just... Yeah, cannabis the artist. The... I, I, well, oh, yeah. Well, I saw you going up the hill. Yeah, that was, was tough. Like, see, see, it was tough because well, I no. wasn't told that I was going to be walking up a mountain and I had 70 pounds of camera gear, jeans on, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was, Did anybody have a pail? A pail? Well, I felt that D was good. Pause. I felt that D, <laughs> Miss DL was cool because he does these stairs all the fucking time at the spot. So, by doing those stairs like that, you gotta have, like, that's not the normal shit. Yeah. Like, so when he was doing it, like, he didn't really, I had to give it to him because he didn't look like, you know what I'm saying? He Ooh. was gasping. Yeah, it wasn't know? even like a path. It was just. I saw you. It was mm-hmm. like, we were crawling up rocks, holding on to, like, trees and pulling us it wasn't even like a, a trail what was he trying to achieve up there like, well i guess the he wanted to go up there because the name of the song was like on the ledge or something like that so i did that uh that was cool you know it was all right yeah. um C- cali ranks remember him yeah yeah he was also on the song oh yeah yeah he did Cali ranks yeah the next day six o'clock in the morning saigon called me and he asked me if i could go film for Ty- tyron woodley you know who that is five-time ufc champion Dude, dude oh, got, knocked out got knocked by out by Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Yeah. Blam! Blam! Yeah, I mean, I mean, also the five-time UFC <laughs> champion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but, I mean, but you know what? Got though? a nice little check for that. That yeah, fight you too. You know what though? I mean, so how was that though? That's I part mean, of the game though. It was interesting. It was a life experience. I was telling Tanya it was a life experience. I, I've never been to a golf course. Yeah. I, you know, without that phone call, I probably would have never went to a golf course. Wow. You know, so. Um, I walk. He, he said I ne- he needed me for a couple hours. It turned out to be like a nine hour, eighteen hole fucking mm. thing. But it was dope. Man. It was uh, it was cool. Um, you know, I I, I felt live right. Yeah, I live the live invitational celebrities Cause, cause playing. Live, playing with, yeah. live, is giving, uh, live is giving out that cash. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, I seen money being spent. That's that's Diplo's that's DJing oh up in there. God. Like nobody's there. They, just DJing. They, they wanted to be live is um on on some wanting it to be um. The golf that you probably wish, like not your grandfather's golf. Yeah. They wanted to be uh They call it golf with noise. Yeah, because they gotta have music. You know what I mean? Cause you know, if anybody ever seen a golf tournament, like, okay, now they move to the seventeenth hole. <laughs> if you hiccup, they look at you. Yeah. That's why I said to a couple of the golfers, I, I, I told them I was this is my first time out here. I said, I don't this this music is weird because what I know from golf is from TV and movies. Quiet. And it's like and they're, they're playing DJ Diplo's DJing this and that. Um, that Taylor was Cusack was uh, was Woodley's partner, and then partnered up with them Sports were two center, right? were two like professional golfers. Mm-hmm. One was the NCAA champion from Clemson. When you're golfing, there's your your group of people, and then like you know, 10, 20 minutes behind you is another group of people, and right. it's just Move throughout on. the whole day. So sort of like, sort of like mini golf, but big big yeah, golf, but big but golf. Ahead. So like around hole ten. And hole 11 kind of crisscrossed on the way out. And I walk past this dude going, well, I'm going to hole 11. He's going to hole 10. And I'm like, oh, man, that is um, Kevin Lyle. Kevin Lyle. I was like, that's Kevin Lyle right there. So, you know me, I don't say shit. I've talked about it on the podcast. I've squandered multiple opportunities in my life because I don't, you know, just want to sit there in the corner and smoke weed. So a couple of holes later, we, we reached this, um, like, restaurant area. And there was food and drinks there. First time, 15 holes. I thought that was crazy. You know, like, it's hot. You're walking a lot, 15 holes. So Yeah, 15 holes is something else. I go up in there, and (laughs) I I get some food. And sure enough, turn around, Kevin Lyles is in there. I mean, why not? He just did the same thing I did. He walked all those miles, you know what I mean? So um, I walked up to him, and I said, hey, I know you think... None of these uh, rich ass white yuppie people know who you are, but I, I know exactly who you are. And he was like, "Yeah." Like, mm-hmm. Took a picture and I kept it moving. Sure. Couple ho- couple holes later, he comes up to me and he says, 
are you a videographer or a photographer? Because I because he saw me with my stabilizer right. and he saw me and I was like, oh well, I really you saw your stabilizer. Yeah, my you know. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, so I said, yeah, you know, I told him this and that, and I told him I did music videos, and I said I, I did a few for some of your artists, you know. Mm-hmm. And he didn't ask any follow up questions. Mm-hmm. He was just like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. You know, that's cool. Know. Hey, shout so, out to Kevin Lyle. Uh, we go back to the hotel and I asked Woodley, I was like, you need help carrying your shit upstairs because he got all that golf stuff. And he said, yeah. Uh, I drop his stuff off. I get in, I push the button for the elevator and Kevin Lyles walks off the elevator. And he said, oh, DL, he said. Um, and I said, oh, it was great to meet you, this and that. And he walked away. But he turned around and he said, which of my artists did you do videos for? Mm-hmm. And I told him, uh, that's what I say. Uh, I don't remember. Chuck D, Onyx, Red Man, just the Def Jam ones. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Kevin Lyle, though, too, because uh, quick Hell story yeah. is, is years ago, uh, he flew me out. He flew me from, you know, Boston to the Def Jam headquarters. This was the time when the Dr. Doolittle soundtrack, the second one, was out. Oh, okay. So I sat in there with him. Uh, I listened to the music. He had artists coming in. He, he, he included me into the meetings because everybody knew show coming in, you know. And I'm like, you know, because he's shooting him down or whatever but we had a good time man he offered a situation man we kind of um passed through that a little bit uh i think teflon ended up dealing with the situation with him but man i mean it was a good visit it was good he kept it straight too so um you know i i, I shot i seen him you know, <laughs> since being on um some exchanges with dame dash online and shit <laughs> like that which was pretty comical but yeah. such is life he's still standing and, and it is what it is man shout out to kevin Lyle. So then the next day, I went to the Terminology record listening party because I produced the outro for his album. And that was cool. That was in Boston. And then the Shout next two Terminology days... Friend of the show. Always. Yep. Then the next two days, me and Tanya filmed for Busta Rhymes. Who was Busta Rhymes, Bone Thugs was day one. And day two was Benny and Conway. Mm. So it was cool. Um, you know. I'm about filming. Huh? I was sitting in the VIP room sleeping. Buster Rhymes hasn't missed a step. Yeah, I was incapacitated. He, he put on a good show. Uh, Shout out to Buster. And oh. then Bone Thugs and Harmony. I don't know. They put on a good show. What'd you think about Bone Thugs? Um, I was sitting down the whole time, so like there was nothing that like got, made me get up to what be like, this? oh, let me see what. Okay. It was okay. I, I I don't know. They were missing their two biggest act uh, names, so. I enjoyed know. listening to them, but it's not Bone like Bone it's like the Temptations without Buster David Ruffin, Rhymes, you know. Like, yeah. Complete opposite. But once they got Dennis Edwards, though, that was popping. So, ah, you know, on, I don't know about that. Yeah, it was. They had a couple songs. Yeah, that with him. Pop was Rolling Stone. That was like yeah, one that of was the like the hit. one. That was that's one, when he man. replaced him right there. You know what I'm saying? And um, I ain't too proud to bag all them joints. No, nah, that's that's rough though. That could be rough. Yeah, yeah. Um, be. so Bone Thugs was good. Con and then Conway and Benny uh closed mm. closed it out. Yo, shout out to Buster. I'm going to be hollering at you in a minute. You know, I know we, we got some business. Let's go. And, um, you know, much love always. You know what I'm saying? But um, so it looks like you had an eventful week, <clears throat> which is good, man. I mean, staying busy is good because when you ain't busy, man, you still, you dead. So <laughs> keep it happening, man. Keep it going. Um, but sadly this week, uh, there was also a tragic death of Canadian battle rapper Pat Stay. He was stabbed to death in Halifax. Um, Pat Stay, the Canadian battle rapper who called out the game for desperately vying for Eminem's attention just weeks ago, has reportedly been stabbed to death. Um, According to CBC News, Halifax Regional Police haven't publicly identified Stay as his victim, but Stay's brother, Peter Stay, confirmed his passing. Uh, Police were called to the 1600 block of Lower Water Street around 12.36 a.m. <laughs> local time with the reports of the stabbing. Stay was taken to a nearby hospital where he um, ultimately died from his injuries. A source close to the situation confirmed the incident took place at a bar. Now, this is sad because, as we know, man, we... At a bar or outside a bar? Do you know? at a bar. Inside? Yeah, bar. that's what said. So. But you know what? It's just sad because, you know, we lose a lot of rappers. For murder, it's senseless. Whatever it was, we don't know like what it what it was, and we probably never really know the intricacies of it. But damn, man, you know, um, you know, rest in peace to him. You know, uh, I from what I hear, he was um, 
a battle rapper and he was humorous and, and <laughs> entertaining at best. He was my favorite battle rapper for sure. And um, you know, he's gonna be missed, man. So he's just funny. Rest in peace, man. So um <laughs> It's a shock when someone like that yeah. that like I mean it's always a shock when like a young rapper dies, but it's a shock when someone like that dies. Because when like usually when a rapper dies they're like more a gangster rapper. Right. Talking about like, you know, gangster shit. Yeah. And they get caught up in that life, and th that's that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting, but there are a couple points being made. Like he is a big guy, mm -hmm. you know. People don't really, you know, people don't really want to fight the big guy. No, of course um, not. And he is a snapper, and like you said, when you're a snapper, you have to be ready to fight. Yes. And and and, and when and then when you fight and you're a big guy, someone might shoot or stab. Yeah, because people get. <laughs> I once had a friend who was a bouncer at a, a bar, very big guy, very muscular dude. Boricua. Man. And he was there, right? <laughs> and he was uh, at the door and could, couldn't, didn't allow someone in. He had to throw them out. When they came back, they shot him in both legs. Yeah. Just because he was a big dude. But by the grace of God, he's able to still, he's walking around doing his thing today still. Oh, that's good. So you know, it worked out. Yeah, that Pat Stay shit, that's, that's crazy. It's yeah, like... it, was, it, was, it was deep, <laughs> man. Because, like, like I said, it seems like, first of all, he wasn't a kid. You know, like these days, um... Like, I think he was 36, 37. So, I mean, dudes are already like, you know, you're not, not a young kid. You know, you're just get, you're, the game is more established. So, yeah. he's been doing this thing for a while. But it's just, it's sad. But you know what? Let's just remember him man, for, for what he did. And all those who probably saw his battles and stuff are going to remember that, man. And, 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 and he, made, he made me a fan. He, like I said, he was a, he's a tall guy. He made me a fan when he battled some dude. I forget his name. And he was a little short kid. And he picked him up like a kid and wrapped at him. <laughs> and, like, yeah. see, that sounds like back in the day with midget wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And they used to throw midgets across the ring. I've showed you some Pat Stay videos, some battles. Like midget wrestling. Midget wrestling was hilarious. It really was. Do what, doink the clown, remember? Yeah, they <laughs> doink the clown. That's remember? Some, <laughs> no, that's some crazy shit. I mean, they used to shoot them little motherfuckers out of cannons and all that. Yeah, but listen, fun. we ain't got nothing against the little people. Don't y'all get mad now. We just saying that you y'all know. Yeah, we didn't name the kind of wrestling. That's it's what I'm called. saying. It was midget wrestling. And that <laughs> shit was big back in the day. Also, um, it was uh, found out that Charlie Baltimore once recorded a whole mixtape, dissing Fifty Cent, <laughs> but Irv Gotti shut it down. That's probably you know a good what I'm idea. saying. Charlie recalled a long time running feud between Fifty Cent That's what my mom and, and G Unit Crew and the label. And how she had the disc uh, record. The clip then cuts to Irv explain the reasons he didn't want his artist firing off this record, that fit, uh, uh, because he didn't want Murder Inc. feeding into the new artist shitting on him to give 50 Cent more energy. Well, however, as we know, 50 Cent did get more energy, and he did all what happened to her. As you know, he disagreed. But she disagreed. She didn't feel like. Um, how we should handle it. She didn't feel it should have been handled that way. 50 was blowing up in the streets and she thought that was their social media back then the way they could hit him back. Uh, but also, it says that they should have signed him, but they didn't. And he went to Shady Aftermath and the rest is history. Charlie Baltimore, wow. I, I mean, I know who she is, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just haven't thought about her in so long. Me it's neither. Like, yeah, that's I wild. saw that. Uh, shout out to Redman becoming a licensed skydiver. Some random oh, yeah? random what? news of the week. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. I can totally see him do that. Just being a licensed skydiver. Imagine that. You watch him on Instagram jumping out of planes all the time? Nah, I just see him always talking. He, yeah, he's he, crazy, man. He be talking his ass off, but he's living that life right now. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, hell yeah. Him. Speaking of Redman. That means he ju he's jumped out of the plane several yeah, times. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen about five videos at least, so he oh. must have done it a lot, you know. He's got some cojones. Yo, we, we, we light one up for the... for the, for, um, You would do skydiving? Uh, I don't think I would. It's not something I'm looking for. I'm not afraid of heights, but I also, I'm like, not. it doesn't seem like it would be fun to me. I mean, it's just not something I'm looking for. Especially, Even if it was a success, I just don't feel like I would have Especially you gotta fun. go piggyback with the dude, like, <laughs> on the back thing. I'm like, nah, we don't gotta be stuck together jumping out of the plane. I'm good. <laughs> I'm straight. That shit wasn't... Planes weren't made to be jumped out of. People just do it. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm that's cool. a good one. Yeah. If that you know? was the case, people could say that we were meant to fly, but we fly in many times. But we ways. ain't really flying. We just getting in planes. That's some next level stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we're jumping when they, up. When yeah, they yeah. Jump yeah. Up the mountains we're in and something that's flying. Off. What you said though, you said flying. We're flying because we're getting in that muffin. Yeah, yeah. We ain't jumping out. Once we get up top, <laughs> me, you, and DL ain't gonna be like, listen. <laughs> which one of y'all jumping out first? 
Cause it ain't gonna be me. Hell no. I don't know. Be- I think that if you're looking for that, like that, like push, that adrenaline rush, that, that like, push, that like I'm alive. Yo, I'll push your Some ass people out. Some people get that I'm alive hey, syndrome. And when hear, you looking for that, that push, <laughs> I sit right in that seat and be like, Tanya, you ready? Who? <laughs> I understand I think that if part. If I went up on the plane, someone would have to push me out. Like I would just yeah. do no it, but you, like I, I won't be able to do it myself. Like, like I got to push me a little. Bit. I understand the thrill of of it. I understand people, but for me, that's not thrilling. Mm-hmm. I like. That doesn't seem like it would be fun yeah. to me. I've not done it, so I don't know. Yeah. But shout out to Redman for doing it. That's like, just it. like soul playing. Once that dude got sucked in the toilet, y'all ever seen that? Yeah. <laughs> so that's that type of shit. Like, yo, man, <laughs> your man stuck. Soul he, playing, it's up there with Shinless List. Huh? It's up there with Shinless soul List. Soul playing, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that was some the shit. The danger zone. Yo. <laughs> We're not also, having an insensitivity moment. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of, um, uh, uh, Redman. Mm. His his uh, counterpart man when they do shit is sometimes Method Man. I uh, was explaining why he's not on the Wu Tang tour. Mm. Now what happens a lot with Wu Tang because it's a lot of members. Did you have this story already loaded up? Yeah, pretty what much. a segue! Yeah, Big yeah. should with the segue. Yeah, dog, you know what time <laughs> it is. Method Man explains why he's not on the Wu Tang's clan and why it's state of mind tour. So, Method Man has explained why he's not there. With some fans disappointed, because it's alongside Nas and Busta Rhymes. Shout out to them. Some fans are disappointed he isn't on the lineup of the group's North American tour. Um, the New York rapper recently took the Instagram Live to give his reasons why he couldn't be on the tour. Well, he had previously booked, was booked uh, doing uh, some movies or whatever he's working on. Yeah. But also he's had fans and stuff in his Instagram inbox and calling him the bitch and crazy shit. And he said he'd never been disrespectful to the fans, but... He has the opportunity to do other things, so therefore he, he couldn't make that at that time. He loves to, you know, do it, do it, do it, and perform. He loves the group. That's just not his means of, of earning. Like most entertainers, that's their means to go on the road and, and make money. That's yeah. really it. But him, he had, he's fortunately has other opportunities, so that's what happened. Um, he's but, he's also a method man. The check might not be there for him. I mean, it seemed like it was kind of, but at the same time, when you go to see Wu Tang. You like to see him, you know, there's some joints. But you know you like to see Method, man. Because yeah. he's like, even when they first came out, that, that first song for Check Your Neck was off the Richter. That's, that shit was crazy. And then when um he came with his part, he had style. His part was different. He you always know what had saying? his personality. You, and you know what I'm saying? I once infamously, we had we hung out one night at the thing called Impact. And uh, everybody was there. I might have mentioned that before. But me and Meth was walking around all night and I didn't have no shoes on. Um, Cause I had some Jordans that were too tight, but this oh, is some Hollywood so you type were like, shit. I'm going. Fuck for, that. For I'm gambling and shit. Walking around, shaking we're hands, comfortable, doing autographs and all that shit. And I got on <laughs> socks. And ain't nobody ever said. Even Method Man said famously to me, "Yo, I, I couldn't even tell you didn't have no shoes on." I was <laughs> like, "Yo, you know what I'm saying? It, it's one of them. You know, them, them industry events like that. You could, I could. They probably thought that's what I was trying to promote." I was. <laughs> I was. That's when like Eric Benet was singing and shit without sh- shoes and socks on. Well, when you're oh, like celeb, when you're a celebrity, you can do whatever you want. Bro. Yeah, people not really gonna like, question oh, see, you. you see they might question. After. That must be what they do in Boston. That must be what they, the they yeah. must do that in Boston. Yo, I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> I ain't never been one to front, and them fucking Jordans was tight as fuck. <laughs> That's and then fine. Google was like, wait till the morning, just we'll buy more. I said, yeah, but right now these shits ain't winning. And we had just went then. Like, we, I didn't plan on being there like those few days. So we was gonna go to the store in the morning. That's how we got down. But man, fuck shout, that. shout out to this. Uh, this uh, shout out to my man Sean Mack. He one time we went on a, on, a, on a boat cruise, mm-hmm. and he was like, oh, "I ain't wearing these dress shoes. Fuck that." And he walked he walked over in his socks from the car to the to the boat. And then when the boat took off, it, it, it out, out to sea, the someone on the boat saw that he didn't have shoes. So like, you can't be in here. You have to sit on the deck all night. <laughs> so That's he, fucked up. So he had to sit on the deck. It was all cold. He had to sit on the deck all night Yo. long. Because he didn't have any <laughs> shoes. Yo, let me tell you something. He listens to the podcast. Shout out it's to It's funny man. when you said that because I, I went to a, a high school reunion. I had a, some gold snake joints. I actually, I actually had them joints on in the Melissa video, the original. Hmm. So I, I got them. Gotta find that. Yo, they was fly as hell, but them shits was tight than a motherfucker. They was cool for a little while, but after a while... So I go on this boat. I shits on the boat. That's what we call dinner shoes. Yo, these shits wasn't even dinner shoes. These shits. I'm sitting on the boat. I ain't standing up. I ain't dancing nothing. Me and my bench and, and, and people. And when that shit was over, I popped them shits off, right, and just walked. 
It like the back to my car, like all the seaport over there. Walk back to the car with no shoes. I was like, fuck. I don't know how. It was cool because I was sitting down. That's how I made it through. But them shits, man, I actually gave them to somebody, man. But I. That's what ladies call dinner shoes. It's like them really, really, really high shoes or shoes that yeah, look women badass, do that shit. Yeah. but are mad and comfortable. It's like you can only wear them if you're like going to dinner and then coming right back to the house. That's yeah, yeah pop them shits. Oh, Cause ain't nothing more sexy than popping off shoes. Okay. Okay. What? Huh? La zona de peligro está caliente hoy. Boricua. Boricua. What else you got? Dímelo. Speaking on Wu-Tang, we'll just stay on Wu-Tang real quick. We don't have to go deep into this, but I saw Migos came out today and they announced their, not Migos, whatever they're called now, um, Unk and Neff or whatever. Migos? Um, Because Offset's out. Their new album is named after Raekwon's Only Built for Cuban Links and it's called Only Built for Infinity Links. Whoa. So they're showing a little homage, a little homage to the to the past. I like Migos. I don't know. Everybody hates Migos, but nah, I, I, I like really? Migos. I yeah. agree. I like them. Yeah, I'm good too, man. Oh, what the fuck is calling though? I'm good. Who's Craig? Oh, Craig G. The Wu Family Moving Company. They've been your neighborhood moving company for over ten years, offering swift, efficient, and stress-free moving. Just call Wu Family Moving at 978-398-2784. Online at ROUXFamilyMoving.com. Wow, well, see. I'm going to smoke something. Seeing <coughs> me, Mr. DL, and Chef Hola. Tanya. <laughs> Chef Tanya. With German. Yeah, make a roti. Ooh. Yeah. Beef patty. <laughs> I wish I could join in, but I don't want to get canceled. Nah, it's no, <laughs> not a problem. Sometimes you can do Boom. things. Yo. We are here. The Danger Zone Podcast. Big Shug. Mr. DL, Chef Tanya Nicole, yes, we have sir. a le- legend with us. No question, man. We got my man, Juice Crew legend, MC legend, my man Craig G. How are you, sir? What's what good? Chilling. Y'all interrupted the man game for the site. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you got to get that in. It's football season is upon us. You know what I mean? So, nah, this, this is base, This is playoff baseball. Mets. Oh, you! Oh, I thought you oh, said Mets. I heard Mets fan right there. My bad. So, oh, so you with the Mets then? I've been a man. I'm from Queens, man. Can you give us this, uh, uh, a quick synopsis of you know Craig G, MC Craig G, you know the creation and this, you know where you at and you know what I mean, where you came from? I mean, you know, Craig G. I'm from Queensbridge. I've done some things and some stuff. I rap a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> some things and some stuff. Just a little bit. No. I okay. rap a little, just a little taste. I rap a taste, but um, you know, man, I just been around for a long time, man. Thirty something years, man. My first record came out in 1985. I was 12 years old. It was the rap version of Shout. Wow. Down with the Almighty Juice Crew Collective. You know, Biz, rest in peace. King, G Rap, Shan, Marley, Shantae, right. Master Ace. Mm-hmm. You know, um, man, these kids got computers. Google me. That's, <laughs> that's what we trying to get them to you don't do. Know. You know, we know. Look him up. And shout out to Premier because I was speaking to him a little earlier, and he was talking about like, yo, when he first met you, he's like, yo, that was that dude was one of my favorite MCs. So I was all giddy to meet him. So it was kind of dope. We just talked about that just now. Well, the crazy thing is, mm-hmm. Premier brags about me being like one of the first rappers from New York he ever spoke to. Right. Because when Guru got down with the original gang song Wild Pitch before Premier. Right. I used to hang out with Goo. Right. Like they came they came to BLS. I used to answer the phones on the rap attack and on Marley show. Right. And they came to the station. And you know, I was cool with Guru. So me, him and Stu Fine wound up going to some club or something. And I actually like hung out with Guru and then you know, we used to call each other and I would hang out with him when he moved to the Bronx. I was hanging out with him. So, you know, yeah. we got a lot of history. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. yeah. Like, you were one of the first yeah. I, I met. We had yeah. Master Ace on. And he basically yeah. um, told us that you drove him yeah, to go do, his, to do his, uh, his his words would get on the um, Juice Crew joint, the symphony. And, um, Actually, it was the other way around. He drove me. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's he what was it was. My you're ride. right. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah. You're he right. was my ride. He had <laughs> just graduated from um, URI, the University of right. Rhode Island, right. that day, or the day before when we did the picture for the Molly Marlins troll cover. Mm. 
So he was my ride. He had a Hyundai Excel. Right. <laughs> and we was, yeah, like the old little Hyundais. And he drove me to the studio. And um, Kane was already like hot. Kane had a show, but he was there. And he came up with the hook, the next up, I believe that's me. Yeah. And all of that. And he broke out. So me and G was just sitting in the corner taking forever to write. And Molly's like real impatient. Yeah. Like the story goes, nobody wanted to go first, but that wasn't the truth. Everybody was just taking their time to write. Right. And um Molly get, gets impatient. He was like, yo, 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 Ace, what you got for this? Ace went in and killed him. Right. And, and that was like how he got on the song, really. Mm. No shit. So were you friendly though with the other members of Juice Crew, y'all? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but what you gotta understand is is that when we did the symphony, I was 15 years old, man. Right, right. I was a kid. Yeah, so, I mean, I was friendly with them, but I couldn't hang out with them. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to go to school. <laughs> That's why, you know, one of the biggest misconceptions is, is that dudes like me, Ace, and um, Tragedy, got down with the Juice Crew later, but that's misinformation. Right. When you listen to the song, The Bridge, Shan says he is the man who is known as Craig, the newest member out to get, that was before Biz, before Kane, before G-Rap. I was already down with the Juice Crew. Right. It's just, I could not travel <clears throat> with them and do stuff because I was a kid. Right. No <laughs> right. shit. You know what I'm saying? And my mom's was a teacher, so I wasn't going to do a show on a Wednesday night. Right. Good for your mom. It wasn't happening at 14, 15 years old. Nah. Wow. So, like, like I honestly, one of the only weekday shows I remember doing, and it's only because we came back that same night, was at the Channel Club with Gangstar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, and you can yeah. do it. Yeah. So let me ask you a question: Was 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 Whitey Bulger really a silent owner of that club? <laughs> was he what? A silent owner of the channel? Uh I mean nobody, man. I, that's something I wouldn't really know, man. You know, but a lot of people, people were saying say that shit. to me later on. I mean, like if you think about it, right, bro? For instance, this is how people are. So yeah, for for all those who don't know, I'm in the movie. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm in the movie. Of the course, White, the Whitey Bulger movie, Black Mass. And so, um, yes, sir. I and um, so, there's three black people in the movie, uh, but <laughs> but we all know the climate. It was you know racial type times, yeah. a different area. The movie. And um, every time people would see me, so I know that I'm in a movie, whatever they like. Oh, my uncle's uncle used to work for Whitey Bowser. My cousin so and so, yeah. he used to own my sister's house. Like, dude, I hear so uh, much shit. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. A lot about of that. folklore. Yeah, that sure. folklore. That's that good acting, yo. I, dude, they I'm believe trying you. to tell you. Like, I hear that. That's why I'm saying, if someone said that to you, I could see someone saying that because, dude, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I go out tomorrow and my like, oh, yeah? Oh, well, you know, my dog. Yeah, he used to be Whitey Bulger's dog's dog. You know what I mean? That's, I mean like, well, you know, being from Queens, mm -hmm. there was a cat up there that was doing his numbers with the hustling and there was right. a lot of folklore about him too so right 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 I, I think i know i don't i can't remember what they used to call him but you know he was from corona not um, he was from g-rap hood that wasn't um uh, that daryl whiting dude right at uh, the guard dude yeah the dude guard they kind of big yeah yeah, yeah the, he was from queens oh yeah so i yeah. knew i knew him personally i i, I you know few connections yeah. with him you know, he knows who he, somebody who knows somebody. He came through and, and he swept shit up. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's yeah, what he was from Queens, but I, I heard a lot of stuff that I knew wasn't true about him either. So yeah, it, it's they a, be exaggerating the, the story. Well, well, that's what he was. That's who LL was in that movie, Deep Cover. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So and I knew that yeah. because I kind of knew like the dude personally. Like I kind of knew him in the movement. Yeah, you know, like you know loosely, but you know he. You know, uh, a girl I knew too was one of his girlfriends. So uh, yeah, that's crazy gotcha. too, cause he. I remember when they when they that that whole shit went down. That was it was a movie. That's yeah. why they said, "L, come on, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's do this." Yeah. But, but listen, do you yeah. do you feel that um? Well, you say you was young when that stuff was taken off, right? With the Juice Crew, um, 
but do you feel that kind of slowed you up a little something or or oh absolutely right. but you know it probably saved me from a lot of nonsense too right so <laughs> right right you know what i'm saying it probably saved me from a lot of nonsense but you know when they, a lot of the stuff they did during those early times mm. i was definitely not around right i was in the house mm. you know what i'm saying like i recall um you remember the female version of Over Veronica? Yeah, Over Veronica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glamour Girls. I did the beatbox on that. I must have been like 14. <laughs> and I remember breaking night in the studio right. to do it wow. and getting put on punishment for like two weeks because I came home at like <laughs> four in the morning. Oh, man. So it was that type of thing where I couldn't really hang out with them like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really going down like that. And the funny thing is, my mom's new, Molly lived in my building in Queensbridge. So right. my whole family knew him, but my mom's was not having me be out unless I was right on the block right. till four or five in the morning. It wasn't happening. Right. So yeah, it probably did slow me down, you know. What I don't like is, you know, obviously Kane and G-Rap killed the symphony, but I don't like when they kind of compare my verse because they don't really realize that I was in the damn 11th grade, 10th grade right. when I did that song. You understand know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at this video right now. I'm like, you're 15 years old in this video? Yes, I am. Holy shit. <laughs> and mind you, mind you, mind you, the song was almost a year old before we even shot the video. Okay, so 16 at the most. Look at it, look, shit. 16 years old right Yeah, now. I was 15, not 16. 15. 15. 15. I recorded it when I was 14. 14, jeez. Well, yeah, so that's... Yeah. Oh, yeah, so... And I think I think probably when you was 15, Kane might have been 17 or 18, huh? Nah, Kane was probably, like, pushing 20, like 19, 20. Oh, they was up like that. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I think Kane... I think Kane's, like, 54 or something like that. No. I'm not really sure. He'd probably kill me. I don't know his age. Nah, yeah. you're right, you right, though, because I'm thinking about when I came to uh, New York in 91 or so, which uh, J. Rue was like 19, 20 right there. You know, 20, you know, 21, yeah. something like that. So I remember, yeah, that yeah. time for like, wow. Because the reason why I even yeah. say that is because I just always felt like, man, I said, damn, like Craig G is nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hell yeah. Like some cats, it seems like they might have had a, a bigger career or what have you, you know? But yeah. I never, I learned the business. I learned different things as I, uh, you know, was starting getting in with, Gangsta and everything. Uh, yeah. Because I said as dope as you were as an MC, I thought it was just as dope. You know, if not doper than some of the others. But then it was like, yeah. man, for some reason, like, you know, you was at the caboose of it and these cats was, you know, in the end. The, the, the I'll be honest with you, too. I'll be honest with you, too. It just wasn't age. Right. Um, you know, we made the decision not to deal with cold chilling when it was time to do our you know what I mean? I went to Atlantic Records and Trash went to AM. and mm. And when we was on, when I was on Atlantic, it was kind of experimental for them. Right. And I'll say it right here, and I hate when people even promote it, I made a terrible first album. Right. <laughs> right. I hated the Kingpin. I hated that album. Mm. We did it in, look, it was Christmas Day, Molly knocked on my door and was like, yo, you want $35,000 on Monday? I'm, I was probably like 17. I was like, hell yeah. No question. And um, the a and for Atlantic at the time was a house DJ named Merlin Bob. And you know, I was rocking with house music. This is before it got real funny. And I did this song with Molly called Turn This House Into A Home. And Molly was DJing on BLS. He was doing a house mix in the daytime. And this song became hugely popular before I even signed with Atlanta. Mm. And somehow, some way, I mean, I take responsibility for it. They convinced me to do like two other house records on that project. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And it kind of overshadowed a lot of stuff. Like I went from dropping science to doing a real rush job of album. Wow. That's why my second album for Atlantic was called Now That's More Like It. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I, like I it. hated my first album. Damn, I never knew. I never knew. Damn. That's cool. So there's a little history yeah. right here from Craig G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, 
I, I, said, I, I was still out. disgusted I was, I was like, by that. Huh? So I said I was disgusted by that album. So partially the age thing, partially like I'll say this, and I always say this in a few interviews I do. I probably would have been more popular if I put an album out with Cold Chillin' instead of going to Atlantic. Right. But I made way more money. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Gotta respect that. And then you're young, yeah. so you kind of stepping exactly. into it. So you, you know, it's yeah, everything's gonna be yeah. a hundred. That was the early parts of the game, and cats getting bread. You know what I mean? So yeah, and you know, you're dealing with a major. You know, I was on Atlantic, and it was me, MC Light, and them through Priority. It was Kwame. Mm -hmm. It was DOC's first album through Ruthless. Right. Yeah, it was rock. And Atlantic didn't really at that time know anything about promoting hip hop. Right, right. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Like like DOC's album should have went like triple platinum and, and it it barely went platinum. Mm. Because they had this one dude working the entire rap department with like six different artists and he lived in Philly and he would show up to the office like once a week. Right, right. You know, but again, you can't really blame them. This was like, you know, the majors were just getting involved with hip hop right. in eighty nine. Yeah. So and some, you know. basically didn't know what and to some do. of the artists that didn't have that knowledge either of, of what was going yeah. on. Really, you know, you had to learn well, it, as you came to know. I was going up there beefing with them nonstop about why this wasn't happening, this wasn't happening, right. and I didn't even realize I was in a production deal. <laughs> right, right, because it chopped. You. Technically, I wasn't even signed to them. Yeah. Molly was signed to them. Right, right, right. And every time I went up there, they was looking at me like, yeah, all right, man, whatever. Whatever Where's little Marley? fella. Whatever little fella. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, and, and and it really got to a boiling point on the second album. because We worked crazy hard on that album. Right. But at that time, Marley was doing Mama Said Knock You Out, so he ain't really had no time to come up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I, I started finding out about the business really early when things like that. So So another thing, man, on some legendary shit. So you you said you were living in the same projects, same building as uh uh Marley, right? So yeah. so that means uh is it is that movie shit or is, is did uh Shante live over there as well? Shante lived on another block. Okay, okay. See, see, Molly's sister lived on 12th Street in Queensbridge, and that's where Molly had the studio. Right. But Molly grew up on Vernon in my building, 4117. Right. And in Molly's sister's building, Shantae lived right across the building. Yeah, she lived in the other building. So that was you, real. Did you know her though? Yeah. I mean, everybody in Queensbridge knew everybody. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, you know, it's like Kane said when we did verses. And a lot of crews, dudes bring the female in, but you gotta really understand, like Roxanne's revenge was the catalyst for the whole thing. <laughs> He's kind of the mother of all of us. Right. You know what I mean? If, if Roxanne's revenge didn't take off, there probably wouldn't be a juice crew. Right, right. I mean, to be honest with you, there was already a juice crew. Right. It was Magic's crew, and they was all from uptown. Right. And a lot of them weren't rappers. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Magic kind of adapted the name once everybody started getting involved. So. I used to, I, uh, yo, when I heard the symphony and shit, I was like, see, I was in love with the, um, I was in love with like the posse cuts. Uh, I don't know if it was on the soundtrack of it. Right. But at the end of Crush Groove, there was a little posse cut. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You right with L and yeah. everybody was in the Fat Boys and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of Crush <laughs> Groove. I don't know if that was on the soundtrack, but if it was, it might have been though. Early, early posse cut. Because that's when they was all doing they shit. Da, 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 da. They could have kept Sheila E off the song, but I mean, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, they had to. You know what I'm saying? They had to yeah. prince it up. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Well, see, he was like, they could have kept Sheila E off. There. That's funny in the motherfuckers. Yeah, but I mean, but you remember. Curtis Blow rocked on yeah. it, was running them. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of like, a, I don't know if it was an actual song. I got to look that sound up. You know what? Because I'm yeah. thinking, because that was them doing their parts 
Right there. And, and it, it was, was like, like all of Russell's artists. Yeah, yeah they all rocked this shit. And it was kind yeah. of a combination of how um how that, that uh, Def Jam tour was. Like you were yeah. seeing, yeah. each one of them groups was on them Def Jam tours, man, that we all. Yeah, see. yeah. And, and shout out, I know he might not be living, shout out to um uh, DJ AJ. That was the, yeah. that was AJ. This dude was like, yo, it's wild because I was a younger dude. But this dude had gray hair and all that shit already, like, and I'm like, yo, and everybody, you know, what's crazy? Was looking like, oh, did, didn't he? Uh, did he pass away recently? I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, he was yeah. the DJ for the um, Crush Blue tour, Blow. the original shit. Mm -hmm. But he had the little he hat. Curtis Blow. Huh? He had one of the his DJ record was the anthem. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. A -A. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cut. remember that? AJ. Yeah. You know I know. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then uh, Curtis Blow. It's funny because Curtis Blow was the headline oh, wow. on that tour. Of course. You know, he, he, was, he was the first He was the first rap superstar, though. Yeah, no question, man. He, he But then when they started putting that boy in them tuxedos and hats, I was like, oh, <laughs> they got him. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, at first. But you know what, though? If uh, you ever look at him on Soul Train, when he did Christmas rap and he had on like a, a sports jacket. Right. Remember the early pictures of Run DMC, they tried to dress them like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. There's a picture of them in like some checkered board suit yeah, jackets. That's true, that's 100%. And what happened was is Jam Master J came with they, the they, fashion. It was like, yo, y'all can't be dressing like this, my man. <laughs> like, just like me. Let's get these hats. Let's get these hats and these yeah. leather joints and some Adidas. Yeah. Is yeah. Good. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy because all that shit, like the first time I rapped in front of a crowd in life, it was, uh, I, you know, I was a kid um, and I was, uh, uh, that Curtis Blow Christmas rap, right? And that's when in Boston, mm -hmm. that hip hop shit was new. So it was like, like all my yeah. boys, we was just rah rah. So, they didn't know that I I had been home like fucking with this like you know what I mean. So I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, it's the opportunity. And my had the mic and shit. They were playing, dun, 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 dun. and it was a dude named Justice from New York who kind of like put me on about rap because I used to write poetry. Then I grabbed the mic and it was crazy because the whole party uh, just red rushed to the front because it was new and they like, yo, who the fuck is up here rapping? They thought then they see it was me. You know what I'm saying? They like, oh shit, you know. So that was yeah. like my first. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I remember like, damn, that's when I first was like, fuck it. I'm going to grab this mic and start yeah. rhyming and shit. Curtis Bo Christmas. And you know, you know what else is crazy? What people don't realize? You know, um, when they talk about the fashions before Run DMC, right? Right. How they try to make fun of like how Grandmaster Flash right. used to dress. Right. Little pants What people shit. don't understand is, is that during those times, Hip hop wasn't respected, and you had to dress that way to get into Do the downtown different. clubs. Do something different. It, they would, yeah, you could like they wouldn't let you in like the downtown clubs if you came in dressed in some Pumas with fat laces. They wasn't gonna let you in. You had to kind of dress like you know the punk rockers because that's what the you know they wasn't really respecting hip hop back then. I mean, it still looked funny. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I yeah, yeah to, I mean. You know, it's the crazy, <laughs> crazy thing the, about the, the feather earrings. Oh, yeah. It, but I kind of understood. Shit. But, uh, yeah, the, I kind of understood why they did it because, you know, the 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 the, the organic hip hop jams where everybody had the least, that was going on uptown. Yeah. And in order to rock downtown at like the fun house and all of that, mind you, I'm a kid. I, didn't, I, just, I just knew this yeah, because well, there was dudes in Queensbridge well. that was going to the clubs in the city. Yeah, and they could get in, right? Because right. they had on shell toes, fat laces, and uh, you know what I'm saying. Oh, I'm like the they would laces. only let like the break dancers in, right? <laughs> Houdini, them dudes wasn't costume. Houdini, like oh. they was just. I mean, my man had the cowboy hat. Rest in peace, John Lil. Yeah, rest but, in peace. Rest I mean, in peace. Uh, uh, who's which ecstasy? One? Ecstasy. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. But but um. Yeah. They wasn't in costumes like that. They was kind of just no. the regular gear. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like I feel like they were completely underrated. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They weren't the, the greatest technical rappers, you know. But back then, 
that wasn't even really a thing. But the way they carried themselves, my mom's liked to be. Right. It was like how he was. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like them because they kind of were classy with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see Jalil with the smoker's jacket on. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And dude had the little, but, and, and the dude had the leather shit, no shirt on. He was oh, on yeah. some sex symbol shit but, to the chicks. Those were some jams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no question. They those had some jams. Those shirts Rest still. Rest to Larry Smith, who was like an underrated All that shit. producer. If I Larry that, Smith was the dude. If I hear like that right now. To funk, funky yo, beat, if I hear that right now, dog. Yeah. That's just classic. You know, I got a big mouth on my phone. I'll be playing big mouth right now. Hey, remember how them songs, though, when you stepped off into a club or anywhere, how big them shits were? The sound of it. Forget the record. That was Larry Smith. It's just the way they made the the beat. The shit was like, you walked into it. And and when, if, like, I was a dude that read the covers. Right. And stuff like that. Kind of so did back then. We were going to like big studios. Like when they was on Jive, they were going to London to like Zamba, which was like a big studio back then. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So this sound was crazy. Right. Like the bass and everything, they were like, super, compared to the most rap records, they were super professionally mixed. Right, see? And they used to be mad clean too. Oh, no question, man. But them beats were. I remember me going to, yeah. uh, even if I go from Houdini and I slide to the Fat Boys, there was a song that these dudes had, and when you walked into the house party, whatever, the shit was so boom. That's that sound of that time made you want to, like, you know, lift somebody off the ground by their chin. I mean, it was some mm-hmm. crazy shit. Like, it was just, man. It probably was, was, please leave your girl in the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that dude right here. Yeah. Yo, man, them shit was times, man. Listen, I got a question. But you know what's crazy, though? Uh, Jalil was always in pocket on the mic. Oh, no question. No, People no. used to say that you had a big mouth, but now I understand what, what you're you talking, talking about, about. Because what we do, just between me and you, what? not something that you want to tell your crew, Proof. but you had to tell Sharon, and she told Cal. What? The story rolled on just like a wheelbarrow. Uh-huh. Carol told Dee, and she told Pam. Pam was overheard to talk to two other men. Pam is so cookie what she thought she heard, but somehow what? easily I got the word. There you go. Yo, that was like. <laughs> you know what time Yo, it is. I'm you a hip- student, man. Hip-hop. I'm a student. Hey, hip hop for real. Me too. I love that, man. Listen. Yeah. I got a question, yeah. though. Um, huh? Uh, so now, you know, obviously, lately you might have heard and stuff like that. You've been seeing uh, Shan, MC Shan, go on mad shows. And you know, yeah. have all these stories, and you know, Ace is Ace is still um, a little tight about that, you know. But I'm saying, like, do you have a relationship with him, or, or is, you know, with listen, him? Shan, Shan is my big brother, right? Shan, Shan doesn't have a filter, and he's not always right, right? right. And if you, I mean, I, I made this records against Shan, right? I don't know if a lot of people know about that. Right. I made this right because Shan sometimes fights off at the mouth. You know, here's the deal. Let's be honest here. When we started doing the Juice Crew reunion shows, right, it was Kane's idea. Right. Out of all the Juice Crew members, Kane probably does the most performances. Right, right. So the way I saw it was, yo, let Kane run this because Kane got all the connections with the promoters, all of that. But there were certain members who was down before Kane that felt like they should have been running it or they should have got more money. And I felt like, yo, if you do, if you felt that way, you should have put the tour together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then secondly, Kane was like, yo, look, we just want you to do this song, that song, maybe this song, and that's it. But he was paying more than fair for the time on stage. Right. Some people felt like they wanted more time on stage. Right. But this is how I feel. The worst thing you can say at an old school show is, yo, check out my new joint. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> you right about that. You know what I'm saying? You right. They don't want to hear that. They just want to hear the classics and that's it. Uh. And, you know, Shan felt like he wanted more time on stage. Or, well, who's this telling me I could only do this and that? Now, 
first of all, there's a lot of um, a lot of misconstrued situations that there's proof of. He said when we went to Europe, they only let him do one song. Lie. Go on YouTube, look for the Juice Crew Europe. Shan had a half hour. Right. He decided to let Ace go on after him because Ace was hot in Europe. Right. It was Shan's decision. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just told, I told Ace, because Ace has been my man. Shan's like a big brother, but I hung out with Ace mostly out of everybody else. Right. Right. And I told Ace, you just leave it alone. Mm. Just leave it alone. You, you are doing your thing already. And sometimes people are out of touch. Yeah. And they don't understand that. You're not going to go to a show full of people our age or older. They don't want to hear a song they never heard of. Right, especially you don't hear that. They didn't. They didn't come to see that. The old school crowd is impatient. They don't want. They they come to hear the joints. That's it. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, shit. I mean, you know, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. That word. Oh, it's like man, I'm I just went being to, uh, honest. You know, what? listen. I was getting a very good number on those shows just to do dropping science in the symphony. Right. That's I it. had no issue with it. No question. No question. They know what time it was. Damn. No man. issue with it. So um No issue with it. Danger Zone oh, episode 33. 33. 33. Right? 33. Uh, since we had the number 33, and we, and before we even get close to letting you in the breeze, we got a question for you. I'd like to know your 10 All favorite right. MCs. 10 favorite My MCs. Who? 10 favorite MCs. 10. I hate that question. Man. I know. You, well, you know what? You can't hate that one. You know why? Because you might hate top five and all that, but this ain't nobody got 10. Now, but what I'm saying, I understand. What I want you to do for us. Because I'm going to get the 10 and be like, oh, no, no. maybe he should be in it. This what, he should be in it. But I'm going to just fire him up. Yeah, this is what yeah, we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not like the favorite. This is in no particular like. order. Nah, yeah, exactly. not, it could be errors, whoever, whatever. It's just. Run, run, DMC. Who? I didn't hear the know. second one. Did you? Run, DMC. Okay. Both of them. Yeah. Kumo D. Uh-huh. Kumo D was nasty. He, yeah. he he made me want to do the big word rhymes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no question. No. I, I remember being like 12 writing a rhyme and I was the dominator elevator and I said masturbator. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> and somebody pulled me to the side and was like, yo, you know what that means? I was like, oh. <laughs> yo, uh, Akumo D, um, to go into this era, Pharaoh Marsh, uh, uh, oh man, um, damn, even Prince Poe. Like, I like the technical rappers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like the dudes that be like, damn, I gotta rewind that to catch that like two more times. Yeah. G Rap, of course, Kane, uh, KRS One. Mm -hmm. um, where am I at? Like seven? Yep. I, I lost count. Oh, you bugging. How many got? Seven. You seven. You seven. He used to be counting, seven. but that we oh, get to damn. the level. The levels are good. Um, Hold on, hold on. KRS, uh, I'll even put LL in there just for the oh, longevity. Nice. That's eight. Um, nine would be Rakim, of course. Nine. Oh, yeah. And ten's gonna surprise you. I think Pasta Noose is one of the illest dudes with the wordplay. Who's that? Pasta Noose. Oh, okay, okay. Man. From Daylock. Yeah, we know. You know, yeah. I know. Wow. But I could go to I could go to thirty. Of course, like, I hate those Facebook posts where you have four classic dudes in the picture and they be like one gotta go. No, they don't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hell are you to say that? Yeah. <laughs> but the only time that they can't, the only time that works, is when it's some dumb shit I just seen. Prince B, Re Bay, rest in peace. Vanilla Ice, Will Smith, and somebody else. And if he says one of them got to go, you'd be like, yeah, you're probably Listen, right. Die Without You was a classic. Who? That was. And so was Ice was Ice. Classic. So was Ice Ice Baby. No, no, I'm but I'm talking about uh, Prince B, the, the Die Without You joint from the Boomerang soundtrack. is a 
classic. You're well, yeah, you got that. Die without you. Is it my turn? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> what you say, Craig? Don't act like you ain't like that, Craig. Okay. Hey, yo, hey, hold up. I feel a duo coming You know, I just on. came home, so you know I was on some hard shit. I'm like, yo, you know, anything I said, especially oh. after, you know what? It was a classic song, but it was the type of dude I was being younger like that, too, was when, um, when that shit happened with Karis he One. He straight up sang on that, though. But but when Karis One did that situation, that oh, kind of threw well, it out the door for me. I was I like, mean, I mean, he learned a valuable lesson. That, you know, that's why I don't do interviews now. Uh, but he he got out of pocket in the interview, so he deserved that. For yeah, me, he, he well, I, know, his soul. I know the story, but it still was like, damn. He up there doing Die Without You, and it got, it got no, mad. No, I thought he was doing Set Adrift on Memory. Oh, he was, he was, he was, he was. He, yeah. he was. Yeah, yeah, Craig. Die Without, Without You was after that. It was a slow song, but it was it was like, damn, dude got soul. And then look how they came through. They came, Karis won, Kenny took over the tables, Karis won, bow, yeah. and then they rocked. Love. You know what I'm saying? That's why you can't, see, I did this because you was an MC for I don't trust the press. He'll say something like, yeah, I don't listen to hip hop on Sundays. I listen to 80s pop when I clean up my house. And then the headline to be like, Craig G hates hip hop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't do interviews. No, so I hear you. It's hey. hard to get me to do an interview. You know, you know it's, we appreciate that 100%. That's yeah. number one. Uh, number two, you remind yeah. me of a story. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, you probably know who Lou Rawls was, right? Absolutely. So people said about Lou Rawls that he didn't like hip hop music. That he didn't, you know, he, 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 this is what I was always hearing. So Guru and, mm-hmm. and Guru and myself at that time was doing Jazz with Taz tour. So we were doing mm-hmm. some hip hop shows, but we was also doing all them jazz festivals. Yeah. And so now I'm getting breakfast in the morning, and I, you know, that's my mother and man too. I said, oh shit, Lou's, Lou Rawls. So I go over there in the buffet joint, I'm eating whatever, sit down with him. He a little dude too. And rest mm-hmm. in peace, man. And um. His voice sounds just like the record too. Hey man, it does for real. Like, I did. You know, I'm saying I just want velvet on his tongue. That's really how he sounds, you know. <laughs> yeah. hey, you'll never find a hairline yeah. like mine. Nah, nah, that's what's <laughs> that? Hey, well, some other Someone shit. So, so I was sitting next to him, and I said, "Yo, so is it true you don't like hip hop?" You know, and he said, "Well, I never, I never really actually said that." You know, that's what they're saying. But he said, I just, you know, a lot of times, you know how people used to be like, oh. Were you standing over him? No, no, we're sitting down. This is breakfast. (laughs) This is breakfast. Yo, this is breakfast, son. We are, yo, look. First of all, I'm next to Lou Rawls. And I met a lot of great people in my travel. Don't don't get it twisted. (laughs) Yeah, Lou Rawls, even though. He was gangster. Lou Rawls, man, even though my pops, man, rest in peace, used to always talk shit about Lou Rawls. <laughs> but still, I'm sitting with Lou Rawls and I know what's up. He probably was mad because mom's like the mom, you know. But <laughs> I said, yo, I heard you don't, you know, like hip hop. He said, well, you know, it's not that. That's what they say. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I hear, you know how people would be, uh, a lot of times I hear about that shooting and killing and hoes. And this is what he's saying to me. I'm just like, nah, you know. And so look at what you come to watch what we're doing. You know, we was doing the jazz test. I said, yo, there's a whole lot of different ways. And he was like, you know what? That's something I have to check out as we were eating, you know, the biscuits and eggs and shit. Me and, me and Lou, that's one thing I say. We sat down, had breakfast, and I mm-hmm. said that to him. And then when we were rocking, we did you our- You that? That's what he said. We sat down. <laughs> no, but let's just slide the trail. We performing. <laughs> and then I see him in the cut, too, like he's watching us, too. So I'm saying, there's so much that um that we did, you know, where, where damn, like, you made me just remember that. And I'm like- Wow, man, I was on some shit trying to see. Yo, I want to know why you don't like hip hop. That's why I was like, you know. And then he was like, that really wasn't the case. But he was coming from a different time where he probably didn't understand, yeah. understand it. But he was yeah. loving us, yeah. though. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But you know, clickbait was around before computers. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Magazines got to sell. They had to sell the magazines too. So, you know, they'll take just one quote out of a. 20 word sentence and make that the headline of the article no and it's question. even worse now with the bloggers and that's why i don't really do interviews like that yeah, they you know what i'm saying listen man you know they always want to ask you about some beef or listen my man i, I am listen i'm so far away from that man yeah. you know what i'm saying wrong man you know yeah. you know and and the thing about me is like when you ask me with the shan thing yeah. i'm gonna tell the truth 
I ain't gonna lie about it. I'm gonna tell you what it was from my perspective. And dudes like to run with that, man. You know, like it, it like clout chasing is at an all time high. Man. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Right up there with snitching. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers is up there. You know the crazy yeah, you, The crazy uh-huh. thing about it is that um it's like it's like when I ask that question to, to you guys that I've interviewed. If, number one is because I know know you you guys, and then I'm I'm more asking even Shan. You know I have my history with him, and then um uh, I'm I'm knowing it. I'm like saying, yo, probably for that perspective, not like yo y'all got beef because I kind of know better than that. Even though no Ace is no. a little tight with it, what I mean, <laughs> but still I don't I look mean, at it like oh. The weekend this dude was beefing with Nene Leach, man. Who was? <laughs> Who Shan? Oh yeah, was people oh. with Nene Leach. Yeah, see, he, he, he. but we know like when they got him on, had him on drink. The old one, man. When they had him on that drink jams and he was drinking, you already knew it was gonna come out. So that that's just how that yeah. shit go. You know what I mean? I, but but you I got know love why for the he brother. never mentions me, huh? He never mentions me because he he knows the same. I don't do interviews. Right, right, right. So he ain't gonna say nothing. He he gonna leave me out of it because he know I'm not gonna really respond. You know, listen, man. Some people don't respect you. They just want you on for headlines. Yeah. You yeah. know, listen, me and you go back. Yeah. I come up to Boston a lot. You know what I'm saying? With, with us. And, yeah, and, I know. Yeah. I come up to Boston a lot and, and see you and hang out with you. You know, my man Cal and them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, other people, they not really respecting you. They just looking for a story. They want to laugh sure. at you. They want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, Shit. you know, I'm not, I'm not for all that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I've never been that dude. I, I, I'm always quiet, minding That's my tough. business in the cut since the nineties. That's just been me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know. You me. know, and, and I, I've always got respect for that because I ain't never have to flex no muscle because if it was drama, nine times out of ten, it was like, Craig ain't started. <laughs> <laughs> I might have some dudes with me, but... Nah, I, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we appreciate the fact, man, that you just even, and, uh, uh, spent this time and came through and chopped it up with us. Because we since you Listen, don't do anytime, interviews. Listen, man. You know you family, man. You know, I appreciate that. Also, <clears throat> it's crazy how me and Craig kind of backed into doing like this little single on vinyl. Right, because you was on the A side, and Drama was doing the shit, the joint. And he was like, "Yo, can I throw this joint on the B side with which I did?" You know what I'm saying? And I was like, "Wow, that's cool." Cause I said, "Yeah." And plus, um, you know, sometimes people want to say, "Hey, are you cool with Craig J?" Like, dude, he, he fucking grown no matter what the case would be. I think I did both of those videos. So, <laughs> yeah, prob, prob, I didn't. I didn't do the um. It wasn't with Avrex, you and Avrex. No, no, I didn't, I didn't do the no, nah, no, nah, I didn't do the video of the mantra. But oh, Craig, 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 I did with Craig, I did with yeah, Craig and Drum. Man, the Avrex joint, man, he pasted a verse together from like nine hundred forty-three years ago, man. Oh shit! I my told you that dude. No, I did a video with you and Drama. Remember we did it in the graffiti tunnel. That was my joint, though. That yeah. was my joint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that Stole joint the, we did. Yeah, dope. yeah, that was a, that. I, that was dope. And I'm I on, just, I'm on the other side. That, so that shit was, the, yeah, uh, limited vinyl. You know what I mean? So that shit was pretty dope, man. You know what I mean? I, said, yeah. I had a, yeah. I had one question. Um, terminology wow. was here today, and and he reminded me of we were talking about that you were going to be on, and he reminded yeah. me of a uh, a couple of things that you wrote rhymes for for some pretty big movies, and I'm just curious how that like came about. Like, how how did you end up, end up getting that gig? Well, basically, um, I was at the Rap Olympics where he had the battle right before Dre found his cassette. Okay. I was one of the judges when he battled this dude named Otherwise. And I thought M won the battle. And Otherwise was down with um, AC Alone. And he was another judge. And me and AC Alone had words because Otherwise won the battle. And M kind of noticed that. And I kind of got cool with him after that. Plus, we had the same lawyer, my man um, Theo Rosenberg. I mean, um, Theo Settlemeyer. He's like Rick Ross lawyer and 50, he was 50s lawyer, but I was down with him before he got 
all the major clients. I used to go answers the phone at his office when I needed some extra money. Oh, that's and um, also, I battled proof at the actual shelter, which was the club. The movie was based on at the club. And um, one day they just called and was like, yo, we need you to help out the actors with their rhymes. And that's how that happened. And then from doing that job, the Get Rich or Die Trying yeah, thing happened true. after that. That's you know so what I'm dope. saying? That kind of like elevated that my stock. Yeah. You had rhymes and Get Rich or Die Trying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the dangerous character. Oh, okay. Oh. The dangerous character. He was in the character. studio. Like, yeah, they shot up the studio. And when he was in the club, I wrote those. Okay, Craig G. Yeah. You know what I'm up in that yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Was there, did you write yeah. that? Was that Craig G? Now was that Craig G with the dreads? <laughs> no, no, that was that was Craig G with the afro. I oh, ain't got no hair. Now. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I remember the dreads. I remember yeah. the little fro. I'm fucking with you though. Yeah, but I, damn, ain't got, I'm, I ain't got no hair now. Yeah, I let it go. It's gone. It's all yeah. good. Though. This is the danger zone. And you still spit nasty though, so it don't even yes, matter. No, you know what I'm saying? Matter. Hell yeah. We grown now, man. I, I I'm not really. They see, I wear my glasses now. I used yeah. to never wear. Them. Good, but but so. could, could you see? Yeah. Oh, now I. I couldn't see then. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a lot of people probably mad at me back then. Oh, I was already anti-social and I had bad eyes. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh -huh. Craig, you crazy. Hey, yo, brother, hold up, man, hold up. I know, see, Chef Tanya Cole has a question for you. This is just what she do what right about now, a.k.a. Yo, Miss Goodwin. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Well, I, I have two questions. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Well, the first one is one I like to ask, especially someone like you. Who's someone that you are listening to na right now that we might be surprised to find out? I mean, you wouldn't be surprised, really. Like, I like the J. Coles and the Kendrick Lamars. And, uh, you know, I like the dudes with substance in their lyrics. You that type of MC. Yeah. You know? And, and, Though I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest fan of the, the gun talk and all that. The sound that Griselda had is reminiscent of what Boom Bap is. So I rock with them a lot too. I like Earl Sweatshirt. I like, you know, I like, I like Planet Asia. There's a lot of new dudes I rock with. So okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Dang. And then my my favorite question. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> No, what are your socials? Where can people find you? My Twitter is MC underscore Craig underscore G. So is my Instagram. I'm really not on Facebook because I'll be avoiding family members. <laughs> I mean, I'm on there. <laughs> like I don't really be talking much on there. Yeah. But um, my page is Craig, just Craig G on Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. Hey, There's the realest shit that's probably ever been said I on this know podcast. facts. Facts. I'm not really on Facebook because I'm avoiding family members. <laughs> hey, like most that people now. That is the now. realest shit. <laughs> got you, got you. Hey, we appreciate you, man, coming Thank you through. So we much. appreciate you stopping by, man. Craig, listen, okay. man, I hope to catch up to you soon. And, um, you know. I know one thing. Them Boston dudes better get me on one of them weed fests, so I'm going to be really angry. I know, man. We, oh, well, we well, can well, make that happen. Well, my Mr. man, DL my right man there. DL's I only the said doctor, that because so. DL was sitting there. This Come is on, it. man. I did the TV show, man. Uh, <laughs> he did. He is on the Weekend Warriors. He That's is, yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to yeah, shit, man. Let's I, figure it out, man. I got the classic weed. We even got a new one coming up. So, damn, man. <laughs> You know, we got that's, some shit. That's great. <laughs> no, I, you know, you know I be in Dorchester. I don't mind him coming up to Boston. You already Hell know. Yeah, right here, man. That's you our know? favorite kind of artist. And then, the hey, DL, travels. man, when it comes to, man, they come to doing shit like that and be in Boston and filming, he'll go to the top of the mountains or he'll go Let to me the know, top my of the G. valley. You know Facts. Yo. All day long. Yo, we appreciate you, Damn man. Up. Listen, Thank I'll you have for a good rest me. of the night. And thank you, bro. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Right, Understand. Big Sug is my people's. Anybody watching that do interviews, do not send me a message because the answer's going to be no. Oh, shit. <laughs> peace, peace. Oh, Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. All right, baby. Too. Yes, sir. All right. All right, man. The great Sue Bird, uh, basketball, women's basketball player. And, uh, shit, I almost a pioneer with uh, all the great things she did. Um, she retired. She retired at the age of 41 years old. Congratulations. Yeah, man. I mean, Sue Bird was the truth, man. Uh, anybody who knows her from the Yukon days in the beginning. And um, 
She had so many uh, accolades, man. She was uh, a five-time Olympic gold medalist, a four-time uh, FIBA World Cup gold medalist, a four-time WNBA champion, five-time <laughs> Russian that. League champion, five-time Euro League champion, two-time NCAA champion, 13-time WNBA All-Star, five-time All-WNBA First Team, three-time WNBA Assist Leader, uh, all-time assist leader in the WNBA All-Decade Team, top yes. 15 player of all time, and Olympic flag bearer. Shout out to Sue Bird, the great retired. For real. Boricua. Boricua, yeah. <laughs> Dímelo. They keep calling me Marty Cone. But anyway. Um, Ay, Dios mío. Oh, uh, yeah. We all, yeah. Telemundo. All that shit. <laughs> but anyway, back, back to the matter at hand. Um, you know, also, I uh, just wanted to say that the Celtics have been entertaining lately. Uh, possibly uh, signing Carmelo Anthony. Uh, okay. For, for uh, a veteran off the bench that can fill up the bucket. All right, so uh, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. For sure. Make sure you check all the clips on the Clip Channel. We have almost 100 short clips on the Clip Channel. Uh, funny moments, uh, drama mm -hmm. in the industry. You know, every everyone's on there. And now, now it's about that time on the Danger Zone oh, we for the NFL picks. <laughs> Bring no forth. And we got here with us this week my daughter. A.K.A. my daughter, Real Love, it was going to make the picks with me and Chef Tanya Nicole's going to throw her hat in, too. The winner at the end of the season gets a chicken dinner. Okay. How about that? It could be like the, the, the family box. It could be your choice, KFC, uh, whatever of your choice, but you get the chicken. So this is really winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right? All right. All right. That's good. I, 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 met, I mess with that. Well, as they would say in the streets, I fuck with that. I fuck uh, with it. Ooh, <laughs> bleep. We can fox with each other. Bleep. Yo, so we gonna start like so first. Say what's up, Reese. Say what's up. What's up, everybody? You know what I'm saying? All right, see. You know Real what it is. Real love. Oh man. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh man. On We're besties note, already. I'm gonna have a sip of Fireball. Okay. So, have you ever had Fireball, Reese? I have. I don't like cinnamon. Yeah. Like I don't like cinnamon either, but I love this. It's, That's true. Me it's too. Weird. It's like, I do not. I'm not a big cinnamon person, but I'll just be a fireball. But this thing is like, all right, this thing is. I Your dad know. is addicted. Nah, I'm not. I don't <laughs> drink it on Wednesdays. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo. So, who do we got? We got the Thursday night game first, right? Yep. Thursday night is Buffalo at LA. Mm. Okay. As I go first, I'm going to choose Buffalo. Even though LA is at home, uh, Buffalo has retooled. Josh Allen is the truth. And also, they added Von Miller on defense. I'm going with the Rams. I think at home, this early in the season, at home, that's going to have more of a effect on the Rams. Mm. That's my pick. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with the Rams. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with the Rams. Yeah, I'm going with the Rams. First game of the season, people are hyped, you haven't done no wrong. I'm going to go with real love. So you want I'm going with the Rams. All right, boom. So that's that. What oh, get? oh, well, hi guys. Oh, you, I, you, you didn't say you wanted to pick. You didn't say um, you wanted to pick. I'm also gonna go you know Buffalo. I mean? All right, next is New Orleans at Atlanta. Let's make it quick. I'm gonna go New Orleans. Um, I like the Falcons. Just, I like the Falcons. I'm going with New Orleans. Because okay. I like the food, and I don't know ish about football, so that's and, where my intuition goes. And, and guess what? I want some beans! She said New Orleans, so you know. New that's Orleans. What, she, and what about you, D? I'm also going New Orleans. Cleveland at the Panthers. Ooh. Well, the Cleveland Cleveland and the Panthers, it's really, uh, it's really kind of a hodgepodge situation at quarterback. Cleveland being that Deshaun Watson, Watson, is suspended for the first 11 games. Oh, yeah. Um, and Jacoby Brissett will start in his place. So Baker Mayfield has went to Carolina and won the job. Mm. And as we know, he played for Cleveland the year before. Yeah. I think he's going to have something to prove. Mm. So I'm going to take Carolina. I like Baker Mayfield as well. I'm going with the revenge story. So you got to say. Carolina. Uh, 
<clears throat> Just give us the, the name, but say you, you, the drama's good, the fact is good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Ca- I'll go Carolina too on this one. Yeah. Okay, so we got four Carolinas. What you got next, Bree? San Francisco versus the Chicago Bears. Okay, oh. here's another situation. So that's kind of a toss. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go with Chicago. And I'm I'm sticking with San Fran. Okay. I like Jimmy a lot, and even if he's on the side. You know what? That is probably a good pick, but I'll probably regret that one. But. I'm going with the 49ers. That's the old uh, team yeah. growing up. One of the teams I used to like. So. Me too. But I'm, I'm going 49ers. 49ers as well. That's what we do. We shake it up. It's, it's like shake and bake. Shake and bake. Some people eat it. Some people don't. But uh, what do you got next? <laughs> I get it out the box. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati. Oh, oh I'm Steelers. going Cincinnati all day. <laughs> Cincinnati was in the Super Bowl last year, and... Uh, I think they're going to be even better this year. So I'm going Cincinnati. All right. Um, I'm just going to go Pittsburgh because Cincinnati is too much like cinnamon, and I don't like fireball. <laughs> mm. I'm going with the Steelers. Don't mess with them fans. Mr. Biscuit will be starting, so we'll see what happens. I'd like to say Steelers, but I'm going to go Cincinnati. Bye, 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 bye. Philadelphia at Detroit. So I'm going Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Philadelphia. Me too, Eagles. Those are also some serious fans. Yeah, they they got jail cells in the stadium. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think Detroit's ever won a game, so I'm gonna uh, go Philadelphia. Not too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Indianapolis at Houston. Ooh. Um, I'm going Indianapolis. And it's gonna be at Houston. I'm gonna say Houston. Okay. I'm going with the Colts for my time in the Midwest. Ah, uh, I say Colts, Colts. Then we got New England at Miami. So everybody thinks that the Patriots are in shambles, right? But I think that they're going to shock. They're going to shock all the naysayers. So I'm going the Patriots. I'm picking the Pats. I'm picking the Dolphins. I'm well, going Ray Fanko and the Dolphins all day. Uh, he's going the Dolphins too. <laughs> Baltimore at New York Jets. Oh, I'm going Baltimore all day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. Uh, Lamar Jackson, just going bananas. I'm also too going Baltimore. I just can't. Choose the Jets. Yeah. So I'm going to Same. Go All right, what do you got next? Uh, <laughs> Jacksonville at Washington. Oh, boy. Oh, Washington. The Washington football now, team. Now, what, no, what's their now, name now? Commanders? Now, I was going to say the, the politically Washington, incorrect they're name. They're the Commanders. Oh, Washington oh boy. Commanders. You know what? In that game, I'm going Jacksonville. Okay. I'm going Washington. You're going Commanders? I'm going Washington. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably I'm go. I'm also going Washington. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Washington, Washington. So it's three the commanders. commanders. Three commanders in the Jacksonville Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> New York Giants mm. at Tennessee. Giants. I'm going Tennessee. Tennessee Titans with my man Derrick Henry, who missed six games last year, maybe seven, but already had a thousand yards rushing. Tennessee. Tennessee boy, the Titans. Mr. DL. Giants. The quarterback is Daniel Jones. But anyway, go ahead. Danielle Jones or Darnell Jones? No, Daniel. Okay. Darnell? She guessed two names and they're both yo, wrong. He's, and he's white. Yo, yo, yo. I never said he couldn't be white. I name just is Darnell. What my name is Darnell. Know. Yeah, all right, man. I play quarterback for the Giants. Yeah, right. <laughs> Darnell. I'm from Hip Top, Mississippi. What? what? Oh, my God. <laughs> what do we got next? I got the hiccups. Now, go ahead. What you got next? Um, Kansas City at Arizona. Oh. Well, it should be an exciting game because Whatever. we have two exciting young quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? But I, I mean, you got to go with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Yeah. You guys got to go with them. I'm going Kansas City. I'm going to Arizona. I'm going Kansas Just City. Just to be contrarian. What about you? And it's hot in Arizona. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Kansas City. I like okay. Kansas City. Okay. Kansas City. Woo-hoo! Arizona. Las Vegas mm. and Los Angeles. Damn, the Chargers, man. Um, Justin Hebert, Herbert. He's a beast. Man, they're looking solid. But the Raiders have Josh McDaniels. And you know what? Now, I'm going to flip. I'm going Raiders, man. Just win, baby. Yeah, I'm going to go Raiders. Hometown or Raiders? Who are you going for? Go with the Chargers. Oh. Mm. And I'm going with the Raiders. Because, you know, yeah. I was born on three the Raiders West Coast. The, three you, Raiders in the Chargers. She was born in San Diego. Oh, yeah? yeah. Outside yes, of the sure. um, Probably crossing the border. Yeah, the border right there. <laughs> My name is Donald Trump, but they keep calling me Marty Cole. But go ahead. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Peligro. Minnesota. 
Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. I'm, yeah, I'm going Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. It's going to be tough. His, his man. Uh, Still playing? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Tom Brady put the pressure on everybody. No, I know. As, as long as he's playing. So I'm going Green Bay. Yeah, I like Aaron Rodgers. I'm going I like with the Packers. Packers. Where are you going? Green Bay Packers. Same, Packers. Green Bay. We got a lot of Packers over here, Paul. Mm, I like to <laughs> pack it up. <laughs> oh, shit. To go. Oh, shit. Uh, who's next? We got, we got Tampa Bay and Dallas. Well, you know what? That's going to be an exciting-ass game. Something's having me lean to, towards Dallas. But, yo, when you got my man Tampa Bay out there, t- Tom Brady at 4-5, <laughs> and the team is pretty solid. They got some offensive line issues. The center's out for the uh, rest of the season. So... You know, but I, I'm going Tampa Bay. Yeah, I agree. I'm ready. I'm going. I'm going with the Cowboys. That's my my cousin's team. Mm-hmm. I'm her ride or die. Mm-hmm. So we're going Cowboys and my aunt's team too. Mm-hmm. Uh, who I think is going to win? I think the yeah the right. Tampa Bay Tom Brady's. Yeah, that's what they get the Tom. <laughs> Denver at Seattle. I love this one. So, the Denver quarterback is Russell Wilson. Who, after being in Seattle for all those years and winning the Super Bowl with them and coming close before Malcolm Buckler took it away from them, um, he has went to Denver. So Denver, he gets to go back and play Seattle. Denver. I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks. Mm. Yeah. I'm going with Denver. Denver. So is that does that end our picks? Yep, yeah, that's what I get. There you have it. That's our first week NFL picks along with Real Love. Chef Tanya Nicole. And Mr. D.L. All right. And we remember at the end of the season, the winner gets the chicken dinner. Shout to Craig G. But my favorite part of the week is stupid as hell. Stupid as hell. <laughs> or like we used to say, <clears throat> excuse me. Stupid is hit it in it out. All right. This week, listen, this guy, man, he's like one of the world's dumbest criminals. Because he crossed all the limits of insanity. This robber, who was 18 years old at the time, um, invaded a muffler shop located in Chicago, and there he demanded money by showing up, uh, showing a gun to the staff. The staff got threatened, but there was a problem. They couldn't give money to this robber as the manager was not there, and all the money was in a safe locked, and only the manager could open it. So, what did the brilliant robber do? The brilliant robber left his phone number. Police asked the staff to call the robber. Go ahead and call this silly motherfucker. He saw the police officers waiting for him. He tried to run away, but there was a brief shootout and the little robber got arrested. So this week, dumb as hell and stupid as hell, little man was Ruben Zarate. Stupid as hell. And, And that, my friends, hey, Another dope episode. You know man, what I'm saying? Good. That last shot, got, last, that last shot got my eyes squinting. Yeah, man. Bit. Listen, man. Listen, <laughs> listen. If you want to smoke some weed, some brownies, you all come through the spot, drink some Fireball, go see Mr. DL or Chef Tanya Nicole, or see me on the golf course with 15 hoes. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. It was holes. Nah, I'm holes. Yeah. Same thing. Yo. It'll be 30 holes. Yo, man. La zona de peligro. It'll be 60 holes. Hey, we appreciate y'all coming through, man. You know what I'm saying? The Danger Zone Podcast, episode 33 with Big Show. Mr. DL. And Chef Tanya Nicole. Excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. Don't make them. And as we grow, we glow. That's all of us together. Catch up. The Danger Zone Podcast. Peace. Peace. On my dog days. Two, two, two. On my dog days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure them. Hard I have, you joke when I stab. Brands in my pocket and still caught a cab.